Hi everybody, Chrissy Shirley here in Hamilton, New Zealand, and Access Consciousness Facilitator, Facilitator of Consciousness. What does consciousness require of me today? So I'm just unaware, I just wanted to explain a little bit why you haven't seen me so often just recently. It's almost like I did fall off the horse. It's been an interesting time with what's been going on in the world. And I really do think that I did buy into the um, upset and the awfulness of what's been going on with the pandemic and the forcing of the vaccines and our grandchildren and all the stuff that's been going on. So it hasn't, I have, I guess I've been buying into that whole reality. Haven't really felt very well, have not uh, been doing all the lovely things that I love to do as much as I usually do. And right now I've got a little touch of um, hay fever or sinus. So I'm working with that to get rid of that. But I just wanted to say, you know what, for any of you around the world who are experiencing this whatever this energy is that we're buying into, do we destroy and uncreate it? Right, wrong, good, bad, pop, all known, shorts, with yours. What I am aware of is that we actually do, we need to be aware, we actually do need to be bright and happy and Keep asking. So one of the questions I'm asking a lot is what am I creating that's greater than what they are creating? And also what can I be and do that will create the change that we require in the world? What can I be and do? Universe, show me what is required. What do you require of me? Universe, show me what is required. What do you require of me to change this? So I'm committed to becoming totally conscious. Now, that's such a great thing when you choose it. You know, I mean, you have to choose it often. You can't just choose it once and think that's going to happen. But I do know that I'm choosing and I'm committed to creating consciousness in the world and also for myself. My target is to be totally conscious in every area of my life. Whatever that means, I've got no idea what it means. And that's what I'm choosing. And I'm committed to it. So there's a different energy when you're committed to something. I just wish to, sh I just wish to share this with you. <clears throat> and I do invite any of you to get in touch with me if you'd like to have a chat. I'm always here available for people. When I do classes, I am so here for people. When I do Zooms, I'm here for people to have one-on-one -on -one conversation. I don't um, record classes and then have them available for people, which is probably something I could do and I may do in the future. What I like is to having personal interaction and engagement engaging with people when they come on my classes and I reckon that people do enjoy that too it's really good to talk to a real person and say hey well, look, I'm not feeling so great today yeah I know where that is I think I've just been coming out of that what if we could all rise up above this what if we could out create whatever is going on in the world I would really love for us to use the access questions more and more and more. The access questions create more than what we realize. The tools of access are so amazing. And one of the little stories I'd like to share with you is, the, is, is a little story that I became aware of that I, when I first started doing access, I chose I chose to go to America to a class called a seven day intensive with Gary Douglas, who's the founder of Access Consciousness. So I chose that. 
I didn't really realize I'd chosen it, but every day I just asked, what would it take for me to go to this class in America? What would it take for me to go to this seven-day class in America? Because I didn't have the money. I didn't have hardly any money at all. And I was doing whatever I could to get the money. And I knew that whatever I was doing was not going to bring the money, but it's all I knew what to do. So I had three jobs. Like I had a part-time job at night. I had a full-time job in the day. At the weekends, I had another job, a part-time job doing interviewing over the phone. And that was bringing me a bit of money. And But I knew it still wasn't going to be enough to do whatever I required because the class itself was probably about $6,000, which in those days for me was a lot of money. By the way, that just reminds me, one of the tools that I teach people so much is to say that's not much money. I don't know whether I was using that tool in those days. That's not much money. Because when we say that something is a lot of money, like six thousand dollars, that's a lot of money. Ten thousand dollars, that's a lot of money. Ten thousand US dollars, that's a lot of money. We're never going to get it. So you know, if you want to buy a house and it's a million and a half to get the house to buy houses these days, just about, you can also say that's not much money, and it will take the significance of it. So anyway, I was asking for that money, and I also required the money for the travel. Now, about a week before, it was approximately a week before the class started, I was still asking what would it take to go to that class in America. It was in the Catalina Mountains and it was on a ranch. And uh, I went to bed on that Saturday night and I can remember I went to bed and something in my head switched around and changed. And I hadn't even realized that I had been saying to myself, I can't do that. I can't go. I hadn't realized it. But what did happen was I started saying, oh, I can go. Oh, I did this. Oh, I did that. Oh, I wonder how. And then I started sort of asking more questions and I just kind of got excited. So I thought, I can go. And I started saying that. How does it get better than that? And that's what truly created it for me so the next day I started looking for flights and I started looking where can I borrow the money who can I borrow the money from all of that and I didn't even have to borrow the money the money just came through and it's when you make a choice that's what creates truly it's wonderful for me for me to remind myself about this such a good idea to remind myself about this because how much are we saying we can't change what's going on in the world right now? Well, let's start saying, I can change that. What do I need to do or be to change what's going on in the world? To change this evil or whatever you want to call it. I can, even when you hear yourself saying, I can't do that, just say to yourself, you know what? If that, I can. And I'm going, I'm going to. How can I do it? Universe, show me the way. So that's my little story for the day. I hope I've inspired you. I've inspired myself anyway, so that's very cool. And I do, what would it take for this um, hay fever to dissipate, go away? Thank you so much for listening. Look, if you would like to know more about what I'm doing, using access tools, teaching classes, doing facilitating sessions for people. These tools are so, they so work. And I'm so skilled. I've been doing it for over 20 years. And the changes that I'm able to achieve for people, well, in, con in, in conjunction with the people, is truly what you would say was impossible or a miracle. I call them miracles, are things that you don't think are possible. So how many miracles can we create today around what's going on in the world? Let's ask for some miracles, guys. Join with me. Let's ask. Miracles, please. Do we have some miracles? Can we change what's going on in the world? Can we get all these people arrested who are doing bad things? Thank you for listening. Get in touch with me um, if you want and uh, find out about the different classes that I'm doing. I will put my website on, on the thing. Here's everybody.